Which, you know, is a, is a complicated thing to do. It is complicated. Hey, y'all. Hi. Uh, Welcome back. Welcome back. Or welcome for the first. Hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy, <laughs> Valentine's, Day. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Mark. I'm Todd. And uh, we're here in this two-person theater conference. Um, where we've been all day. Where we've been all day talking about uh, art and aesthetics and practice and... Um, just kind of the reminder, you know, just like just Todd and I kind of hoping that we could um, make an invitation to you all to uh, to join us in having these conversations about art and uh, and the field of theater and this work that we do. Uh, and part of that is a, is a challenge, uh, the May Day Challenge. Um, so so. You know, there's as much, uh, there's so much, so many stories, so much history that we can't possibly get to, not even a, not even a fraction of it, but, uh, but perhaps collectively we can. And, and, and if we can all just uh, join this conversation to just talk about kind of art, maybe we can kind of center that more and more in, in the field and in our work. Um, so, so we'd like to invite you to take part in the May Day Art, uh, the May Day Challenge. It's got a name. The Art Part May Day Challenge. The Art Part or May the Day May Day Ch Art Part Challenge. I don't remember what we called it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's an invitation, uh, yes. perhaps more than challenge. Yes. Uh, and uh, and and basically, if you'd like to sign up to have similar private conversations in public. Uh, you can do them, uh, you can stream them here uh, via uh, HowlRound, or you can just go to your neighborhood bar and just have them or wherever you wanna go. And, uh, and just uh, either in pairs or in groups, however you'd like to structure them, but uh, continue some of these conversations around art and aesthetics and practice. And something that occurred to me, I haven't told you um, just now is you know, I think part of our um, just skittishness about doing this is not wanting to pretend to be more knowledgeable or expert yes. than we are or, or comprehensive than we are. But I also think there might be great joy in if you know that there are certain things you want to talk about about the art in seeking out people in your own community or colleague circles who do know about them yeah. and bringing them in and asking them to speak with you too so that, you know, to reach out to the people who, you know, there are so many, we, I, we, I think part of what, if you've been tuning in today, you can see is how much we're struggling with sticking with the art part and letting go of some of the complaint part or some of the like field angst part and all of that stuff. And especially maybe in this last segment about civic engagement, um, uh, because to a certain extent we are, or at least I will say I am, talking to the people that I want to convert or to yeah. see what I see. Um, so I think it's really great to go to the people who actually know about the stuff that you don't and open up that conversation. So that would be my encouragement. Cool. And also, if uh, uh, you know, we're taking questions and comments, uh, you can uh, email us at theartpart at howlround.com via Twitter, hashtag HowlRound, or via the Facebook video stream. Uh, and we'll read your comments and questions uh, here uh, yeah. in this conversation. <laughs> So what we're going to talk about now is uh, what we're calling lineage and legacy. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've had the impulse today that we could simply sit here and say names all yes, day. all day. And that they would mean things to us that they might not mean to you or mine wouldn't mean to you, but that part of the impulse behind this has been simply to name the people who have brought this love into our lives, who have trained us, who have helped us, guided us, served as examples, um, and to give a Valentine in a way to them, you know? It's like if we could, who would we give these flowers to <laughs> if we could just leave here and anyone we wanted would be waiting. But, but really more for me, I was thinking about this during the break. It's like, I just, 
kind of wish we had sat here for six hours and named people. <laughs> yeah. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. That'd be beautiful. Maybe that's the next part, the name <laughs> part, the two person, the two person naming. Name, name. Yeah. <laughs> But I think to, to this point, like as we as, in, as we struggle and find our way through this conversation around art and practice and aesthetics, you know, it, it's it's what you said about playwrights kind of during the playwright session around like we never do this alone, and and I I and it's like personally I'm just aware that how much has just been handed down and and you know I think sometimes it comes across a little glib because it borders on the cliche, but like. I think about the, the shoulders of the giants that we stand on. And, and I think kind of in this context, I kind of like especially just mean it. You know, like, like there are some, some incredible people that opened up a way of working, opened a path for a career, you know, just, just, just did so much before I even entered the, the space that, uh, that, that is always present in the room when I make. And, uh, and so I, I'm really excited about this last session yeah. because of that. Why do you feel it's important, though, for us to name those people or be public about it? What drives you to that? I mean, I think part of it is just respect and honoring of contributions that, you know, I, I worry sometimes that we just forget that we have very, very short uh, attention spans and, and even shorter uh, memories. And that that will just, they'll just be forgotten to history, you know. Uh, uh, and even though like our contributions are built on on somebody else's work, um, I just kind of want to hold. And I, and I think that's one of the things that really, you know, just to kind of start some of that is something from alternate roots. That that that's kind of some of those values about naming ancestors and, and naming those those who come before us whose whose practice we build on and so the John O'Neills the Dudley Cox the Roadsides the the Free Southern Theater you know before we even get to Junebug you know uh, yeah. and so so uh, I think like for me it's just important just to honor that because I, I'm aware that. It's not me. <laughs> like, like I'm inheriting a lot. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I feel that much the same. And I've been aware that as we've been talking today, we've both felt the impulse to sort of name companies, name writers, <coughs> name people. And they may not be the same as our own personal ancestral lines. Um, but again, somebody we've talked about earlier today and who I know is having a, new record release right around the corner from us at Joe's Pub at The Public tonight is Daniel Alexander Jones, who's releasing the new Joe Mama Jones album. And uh, Daniel does something that I find really moving on Facebook, which is almost every day he puts up a picture and something about an artist, a thinker, often women, often singers, but, off, but sometimes writers, uh, performers, uh, other people who have meant a lot to him and somehow led him to this place. Or I think about uh, that beautiful Adrian Kennedy book called People Who Led to My Plays, which is basically a scrapbook of oh, everything wow. from family um, to, you know, snapshots and Polaroids and bits of writing um, about the people who led to specific plays of hers. And I've always just thought that was the most beautiful way to spend part of your life. I love that. <laughs> I love that idea. I want yeah. to do that. I want yeah. to pick that up. What's it called? People Who Led to My Plays. Ah. I think uh, Theater Communications Group published it maybe 30 years ago, yeah. 25 years ago. Do you want to talk about some of the people on your list? So a, a homework assignment that we gave each other is to create a list of, of, of our lineage, our leg the legacy that we've inherited, who uh, who helped get us, who kind of brought us here, uh, um, and so um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll start. I mean, I, I think like for me, and I feel like I've been talking about them a lot, but but uh, it it starts with Cornerstone, like like for me, uh, Bill Roush, Allison Carey, and a group of their friends founded this theater company. 
went and created work in, with, for, by different communities around the country. And, uh, and that's just a place where I grew up. It's a place where I just kind of sharpened my, my, my artistic skills, uh, learned some values, kind of just picked up my, my practice. And uh, the highly kind of like, like that's the, the beginning for me. What about you? Um, well, that is, I, I wish that were my beginning in a way because I feel a little sheepish talking about my beginning because it is um, childhood and specifically summer camp. I went to a musical theater camp that was led by these two women who were both amazing performers. Uh, they were sisters. So they were born Suli and Pearl Harand. And they were also great lefties and built this whole camp around, well, the sharing of roles, but the idea that anyone could play anything. Mm. So, um, and around the, um, the, well, the liturgy was really the American songbook. It was, you know, the Bernstein and Gershwin and Berlin and Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, and... Uh, definitely a sort of Jewish cultural sensibility, but the basic tenets of the place were based on John Donne's No Man is an Island, mm. Everyone is Part of the Continent. And so this rich theatrical musical experience welled up out of a sense of connectedness and not being an island. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Everything, every day. Yeah. Pearl and Suli. <laughs> I mean, and, and like the song, you know, another one for me is El Teatro Campesino. Mm -hmm. You know that that for me was that 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 uh, I'm not. I wasn't alone. You know, like I, I grew up in Texas, and I was I think 21 thereabouts, 2021, 20, before I saw a Latino on stage in Texas. And and I had heard of and kind of studied and learned about uh, Teatro Campesino and and um, it was in a moment where there were so little, so few examples of how a, a person of color, a Latino, can have a career in this in this field. Like it was, it was something to hold on to that just mm. said like it's it's possible, and you're not alone. And here's you know. We're here, mm. and we're doing it in this way, mm. you know, which was... What was the first thing you saw? Do you remember? I've got the Teatro Campesinos. Uh, zoot Suit. Ah. Zoot Suit. Started at the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, and then I saw, like, on videotape, like, like uh, just archival things of yeah. some of the actos and vendidos and, um, you know, various, you know... Uh, uh, oh, there was one, uh, Linda Ronstadt... Uh, 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 Corridos, uh -huh. you know, but Wow. Yeah. You came to it so much later in life. An adult. Yes. Yeah. Fully formed adult with, full, with adult companies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that comes later for me. Uh, I'm looking at my list here. I guess before I get to the adult part, maybe, mm -hmm. I just, I'm aware that... Um, Every time I turn to a question like this about who has been important, who has led me to my life, yeah. it, and notably my life in the theater, um, I, it's teachers. And they weren't all, you know, it's not necessarily the greatest of the teachers, but the most important of the teachers. So mm -hmm. certainly the women that I mentioned before, Suli and Pearl, and then there are like all those teachers who saw that I had some desire. Um, and then there really was a turning point um, when I got to college, and I mentioned before Sandy Moffat at Grinnell College in Iowa, and that was simply like he opened a door and the door was to the then burgeoning experimental theater and, you know, the ensemble theater and said, why don't you look at this? And, you know, and that was 
the performance group. It was the Iowa Theater Lab. It was mm -hmm. the festivals that happened at the time, which mm -hmm. I was able to see El Teatro Campesino and San Francisco Mime Troupe and True. all of those companies, um, uh, Herb Blau's Kraken Company and the Reality Theater in, from Boston and just like all of these companies. But it was basically one man in a small school saying, you know, I've been thinking about this and I worked with the Manhattan Project. You should know about them. I'm going to bring them here and I'm going to bring Theater of the Open Eye here and I'm going to, and you should know. Mm -hmm. And my life was never the same. Yeah. I, love I have one of those uh, um, on my list. Uh, I have two of them. Uh, uh, one was just kind of undergrad. I went to this, 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 this uh, uh, Catholic undergrad, small liberal arts college. What was it called? It's called the University of Dallas. It's like uh, 500 uh, students. Do you know wow, totally? at a university. Yeah, it's, it's called like the wow. tiny, tiny, tiny school. Uh, but I, you know, it, it's uh, it, Patrick Kelly and Judy Kelly, his wife, his husband and wife, who kind of ran this department. Mm -hmm. And I, it just I learned about this field like I, I i things that i just had no idea and there's like this theater history that i got to pick up and just like and it just set off everything like every kind of synapse in my brain was just like on fire because it was new and it was exciting and never mind that that you know it was like greek through the 1940s but it was right. i didn't know anything about it and it was incredible uh, and then it, in, in, in grad school, a uh, gentleman by the name of Cliff Faulkner, who's just kind of one of those key, key people who um, exposed like world theater, mm -hmm. like really just like what this looks like in a non-Euro kind of tradition and, and just blown away by spectacle and ritual and everything you know that, that I just was just had no knew nothing about and was just wildly excited by wow I'm imagining hopefully imagining that the those of you who are watching us or listening to us are jotting down the names of your own <laughs> yes, please, teachers and please. things I you know I feel this um, more and more I uh, as I I think more and more about aging um, to what extent, do, you know, I feel somewhat responsible for um, remembering. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about before about uh, w we don't remember well in our field, and I think it's really true. And um, and that part of it is simply the naming and the keeping alive the names and let it, because you know, it, it, and I think about this as a father too. It's like. You never know who you're going to meet. That just seems like one of the 12 teachers you have in freshman year of high school who is going to change your life, sometimes simply by a book they hand you. Um, and they need to be honored. That's how we're built. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so yeah, I guess... <coughs> My entry to this field as a field and thinking about it, I can't separate from Peter Zeisler mm -hmm. and Lindy Zash. So Peter was a founder of the Guthrie Theater. Um, he ran TCG for 24 years, I think, 23 or 24 years. Lindy Zesh was his associate there, like ultimately called the deputy director, I think. and. Um, I was introduced to them by someone else who was an associate there, uh, who I had met uh, before, Arthur Bartow, who sort of led me to them and they led me to the world in a way on a project that was basically traveling the country and meeting with artistic directors and documenting the conversations. And um, I didn't even know that I was entering a field. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> know there were that regional, I had grown up in Chicago, but the Goodman, which was the one standing theater, wasn't really professionalized when I was growing up. I'm the same age as the Steppenwolf gang, so that wasn't, hadn't founded yet. There was the body politic, there were some theaters, but there wasn't a sense of a field. And 
it was as if they, you know, they bought the tickets, rode the planes with me, and introduced me to the field. And, um, and I actually feel like I am responsible to the field that they um, gave me introduction to. So I'll stop there and come back to it. What's next for you? Oh, I guess it's <laughs> such a good story. Um, what I have you? Uh, uh, so, so uh, next up for me is Luis Alfaro, huh. uh, who huh. uh, it was a, again like it was it was a Latino, queer, so smart, so funny, and and just was just writing this work that was not like anything I had seen. And that was just opened opened up all sorts of, of doors for me in terms of just thinking about the role of solar performer, the role of like how we tell our stories. And, and I think part of it is, um, I think my I, I, I was so aware of just kind of um, I. It, it, there was a there's a part of me that just thought like uh, we need to look at identity politics in a certain way, and and Louise just kind of blew <laughs> that up. I'm like no, yeah. you really don't. Like, like, and it, it and and it's irreverent and funny and familiar, and uh, just kind of uh, uh, opened up, opened up ways of thinking, uh, thinking about that. And 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 I'll kind of add on because it's it's similar. Is uh, and I, I won't talk too much about it because I already I already talked about it. But but Eric and and seeing that show that the play beginner all those years ago that just showed me a different form, a different way that was unlike anything I had, I had seen mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. took me out of what I thought plays and, and performance was supposed to be and showed me, kind of opened up imagination and, and said it, it can be so much more. Yeah. It's so interesting. So this is a little bit off the, it's not on my list, but when you mention Luis, who is a very important person to me too, but not any, not a, not in a yeah. kind of ancestral way. Um, I'm aware. Uh, it feels like such an honor to work in a field, profession, art that has such people in it. Do you know? And I've, you know, I've been. Um, Lucky doesn't even begin to describe it. I, I, I feel amazed by my own life that I have met the people I have met. Mm -hmm. And so there are people like Luis Alfaro. You know, we've talked about Daniel Jones. We've, um, I think about Taylor Mack while we're on the subject of sort of individuals who are, they're actually younger than, you know, they're actually yeah. not my um, contemporaries. Um, Susan Laurie Parks, there are people that are um, that feel to me gigantic in the in the scope of their humanity, mm -hmm. and that make me just feel amazed and excited to be alive. Do you know? And so, I guess the person on my uh, lineage list or ancestral list, who is like that is someone I didn't know at all, um, you know, except to have met, is Ellen Stewart, La Mama, mm. yeah. because from her, I just, I think it's like a th three part thing. It's like, this was someone who built a world from nothing, welcomed everyone into that world, yeah. So the sense of hospitality, which I feel is central to this work, comes from her, the ring, her little bell, and also the sense that she, this goes back to our earlier discussion about playwrights, she always led with love for the person, not the project. She didn't even read the project. Mm -hmm. It's like, you, honey, you come here. You need to meet this person over there in Spain I'm gonna fly you over there, come back with something, make something. Oh. And that to me, I don't know of any example from my lifetime of a more hospitable, spacious, you know, 
um, maker of happening or things, do you know? Uh, so La Mama. I love that. I love it. Uh, it's kind of like that, you know. It's a people that I never got to meet, uh, but uh, but I feel kind of definitely whose shoulders I stand on is the group theater. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, They're on my list too. And Clerman. Just like incredible, yeah. Clerman, and just like the, the 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 whole bunch, you know, that that kind of we're looking at kind of their world and just decided just to just grab it by the collar and just kind of it just. Even now, it just feels, it feels like it has a danger to it. It feels like an urgency. And that, that it can live across time. It can be political, and it can be poetic, and it can be made by this collective, like, like this, this odd assortment of the big personalities that somehow decide to kind of stick together and just kind of transform and you know, just like make us rethink of of a way of working and and what the work itself can be, um, yeah. you know, just it's just for me, I just I, I I hold constantly as you know as as uh, just a reminder that you know like uh, how do how do how do I make with that kind of urgency? How to make yeah. with that kind of commitment? How do you make with that kind of ambition? Yeah, and um, and they just you know, yeah. I, yeah, love that. And to marry aesthetic values and social values yes. to such a great extent. So I'm I'm always torn about Clerman and the um, the group because absolutely, I mean, everything begins there in a, in a way in this country in terms of the art of the ensemble. And for me personally, I've been truly more than any writer thinker inspired by Clerman as the person who talked this into being mm -hmm. with these, you know, 10 months of Friday night talks that then became the group theater in the hotel room at 11.30 till 2.30 in the morning, you know. And every time I think I want to dedicate something to his memory, like to write a biography of Clerman, and there isn't a good one, I think, I don't want to read the criticism. So the part of him that was the critic, it's like, I don't want to live in that part. Yeah. And that's so that's monumental yeah. and important. Yeah. I, I just am not interested anymore. <laughs> um, but that's interesting. So another person that, that I met <coughs> and barely knew through this Peter and Lindy tour um, was, and we've talked about her before, is Zelda Fitchhandler, the yeah. true founder of the field, but m even more, and she wasn't a writer like Harold Clerman or Robert Brewstein in that sense, a critic as well, but she was an amazing writer, an amazing speaker, and leading up to her death uh, uh, two and a half years ago, I think, mm -hmm. and since then, and now in full gear, I've been editing her collected writings, or now they're selected writings, and living with her mind, and living with the fact that over 40 years as, as an artistic director and something like 25 years as also the head of the acting graduate acting program at NYU and the founder, one of the founding mothers of this field, she never ever for a second lost track of what the theatrical event is in terms of shaping and amplifying our humanity and crossing the gulf from one heart to another. And um, I go back to her writing every day when I'm working mm -hmm. on it, and it's like I'm massaging my heart mm. and soul. It's incredible. Uh, uh, along those lines, um, somebody that I did not know, I mean, I shook his hand, said hello once or twice, but Gordon Davidson. Mm. Uh, um, Part of my practice is producer, and uh, and there's, there's like, like again just a, a similar kind of individual with just audacity, who just who kind of <laughs> was investing in people, yeah. was just was just kind of doing giant projects, who's taking risks, who was showing us what we knew before we knew that we needed it. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of talking to, it was really interesting talking to a city. 
talking to the to the nation mm -hmm. and and producing this work and just his instincts as an artistic director his vision as a producer just um that's like like there's something for me that, that it's um the the gordons the zeldas the margo jones the nine advances the you know those 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 those, those pioneers of our field who um there was something kind of um that I, I, I just say audacity of, of like, like it just like feels like the right word yeah. of just like big vision. Yeah. And and like that's the thing is like, like God, please give me something that maybe <laughs> yes. could maybe someday resemble no, something true. kinda like that. Yeah, no, it's so as they create aspiration. They do, yeah. They really do. Um you know, one of the things, just a, a footnote about Zelda that I, I've been thinking about is as I you know, I started working with her on her book when she was, I think, 90 or 91, and I was looking at 60, or, you know, it was a couple of years out. And so for me, a lot of it was about um, her, certainly, and the writing, but also about how do you age gracefully in this field and stay alive as a artist, mind, human, and it's an extraordinary example because she could, one of the reasons she couldn't finish the book is she never felt she knew enough uh, about the, the field that she instigated yeah. and created. <laughs> and she wanted to know what people were doing now. And I want to be that. Do you know, I, I had want to one be like conversation that. with her uh -huh. once in my life that I hold on to very, very dearly. And it was she wanted to know what was going on now. And I'd just gotten to net and I reached out and she was just like that, like, I want to know what that is because that feels exciting. <laughs> right. And that feels like it's going to breathe right. new life in, but I don't know. Like right. I, I know what I know, but I feel so removed. And right. she just, and I mean, well, I just wanted to like, tell me stories, <laughs> right, you right, know, right, but right. she would have right. none of it. Yeah. She was like, no, no, like no. I want you talk. And that's the example. It's the example of the curiosity that never is quelled or the, the hunger and the, the love of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gosh, I feel like there, we've there's a lot of names and we're also running a out lot of, time. of names as we went. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, is there, I mean, anybody that we, we need to mention? I mean, it's interesting. It's like there are also the people like we were talking about people who may not be our necessarily progenitors, if that's mm -hmm. the word, but who um, should never be overlooked. We were talking about Bob yeah. Leonard, the amazing Bob, Bob Leonard. Leonard founder, a founder of the road company and now at Virginia Tech, who has just led so much thinking and work around mm -hmm. community. John O'Neill, we talked John about earlier, just Free Southern Free Theater. Free Southern in general, so, what yeah, an amazing. I mean, just completely, yeah. completely, completely, Amiri Baraka. Yeah, and then people who made music. So it's like, I keep thinking, well, somebody on my list is like, who is it? Is, <laughs> that, it, you know, is it like Leonard Bernstein? But, in a strange way, I keep coming back to Liz Suedos. Oh, uh, yeah. Because there was something, and maybe it's the La Mama connection, but Liz is, um, you know, I think the first thing I saw was Runaways, which was built with yeah. this community of young performers. And, you know, and it's kind of, to me, the er spring awakening, the er once, you know, the er, um, of those kinds of things, but also her work with Serban at the La Mama, her kind of global vision, and yet the intimacy of that work. Mm -hmm. um, just the fact that she was always in it and doing it and hungry. You know, I want that. Yeah, I love that. You know, one, one of the people on my list, I have a really long list that we're, yeah. no, no way we're gonna get to Do you wanna to just run through the names? No, I'm no? good. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, we I have only like, like five more minutes. We don't have questions or. Comments. And I, I wonder, like, so if anybody's watching, if you wanted to give a shout out to like a name, like, yeah. like send us a name. Like, just like, we'll read the names. It's Valentine's Day, and it's like let's just yeah. send love. Send love. Um, <laughs> you know, right. it's universes. Yeah. Mildred, yeah, uh, Ruiz, Steven, Steven Sepp, Ninja, Jamal. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like you know, a, a newer ensemble, but yeah. I, like, like similar to some of the things that we talked about, like yeah. such urgency and, and talk about virtuosity. Yeah, no, just totally. Like 
performers and so smart and just taking on like these big ideas like they're in Maryville like that opening of a Maryville is just magic yeah just beautiful yeah. and and you know and yeah <clears throat> shout out to them right no yeah no once we get so now we're getting into also to the 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 people whose work and beings we love and there are just so many i think that's where i started crossing off before we sat down here today uh -huh. um i think one uh, person that i uh liz suedos uh, we just got Hamilton a comment writes, from yes whenever i wondered why i was doing theater sure enough the greek tragedy would come around the greek trilogy would come around today thank you sabrina hamilton um you know there are those people that you never meet to that have some example like for me Joseph Chaikin was that. Oh my goodness, yes. Who I like? I, yeah. me, I mean, I met on the street, and that, that, I, I was, I, I couldn't speak, yeah. and because there was something so pure and essentialist, and um, just unstoppable about his desire to know and to do more. And yeah. Maria Irene Fornes. Similar, of just like somebody that just art like feels art, as art, much, art, art, art. yeah, <laughs> and it's just like it yeah. just same thing, yeah, just, like, pushing, uh, constantly experimenting, yeah. distilling, just like to bring it down to yeah. Like, essential, yeah. The living theater we, we were talking about yeah. them a, a little while ago. That you know, just uh, another one that <laughs> never yeah. met them, but it's I, interesting. I'll just tell a little anecdote. Um, uh, Judith Molina, we, we did a reading of this b this collection of founding visions, an ideal theater at uh, the Siegel Center here at the uh, City University of New York. And we had artistic directors like Mia Yu, who took over La Mama from Ellen Stewart, read Ellen's work, and Oscar Eustace read Joe Papp's work, and Kristen Marting read Susan Glassbell of the Provincetown oh, Players, right. who's another one, the Provincetown yes. Players, <laughs> the beloved community of life givers as the goal. Um, and Judith Molina was there with her attendants, and she was in a wheelchair. She died soon after, and she, you know, stu she stood up. She said, "This is great, all great." I don't think she stood up. She sat she up, said, and yeah. all great. But you left out my teacher, Erwin Piscotter. I've written a book <laughs> about Erwin Piscotter, and you can buy it. And, you know, <laughs> and, and it wasn't even—he wasn't even a founder of a theater yeah. in that world. But that thing about our teachers. And literally, she was 90 when she was like talking about the impact of her teacher. Uh -huh. I love that. That's <laughs> such a great story. <laughs> it was a she, great she, we did a, we did Net did a conference here in, in New York, and she was there. It was one of her last appearances. Yeah. And I, you know, and it was just packed. But it was like the, this, this, like she was saying, like, why are we sitting here talking? Like the world's on fire. We should be yeah. out in the street right now. We don't right. need to be sitting here talking to ourselves. Right. Let's get out there and let's be making art <laughs> on the street for the people we need to be seeing it. Right. Just, just, it was amazing. Yeah. It is incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm loving this. Just sitting here, <laughs> you know, talking because it feels like this is what keeps us lubricated and aspiring and. Um, and to remember, which feels more and more important. Um, There's so a story, I, I don't know if I, I, I think yeah. I mentioned to you, that, that we, we did its net conference, and uh, there's a guy who was sitting on the bus, kind of there by himself, and uh, Ashley Sparks goes to talk to him and says, hey, like, like how was your day? And he's like, oh, it was really good. And she's like, yeah, well, what, like, what are you thinking about? And he said, well, like, it was really amazing, because like, uh, I kind of, feel alone like our company doing this and like now I realize that we're not the only ones doing this and how amazing that is and she's like yeah that's really great and I said yeah but at the same time it's like well we're not the only ones doing this <laughs> right. you know and there's something if you think about lineage and legacy and how we pass this down that that like that just kind of gets to that there's something amazing in those moments of finding out that we're not alone and there's also something like sometimes we like to think that we're inventing something yeah, that's absolutely. never been done. And then you realize, oh, well. Well, I do. I wonder, because I maybe because from my own experience, uh -huh. I wonder if as we get older, we're more aware when you're young, there's a way in which you have to be believing that you're making everything up for the first time. Yes. Although some people are always connected, yeah. you know, so there's I guess there's no way to generalize. Mm -hmm. OK, we have a comment. 
Do you want to do this? Uh, Todd and Mark, this is from Vivi's Colombetti. Hi, Vivi's. Uh, Todd and Mark have incredible insights. I'm loving this conversation. The comments and observations are as varied as there are humans with our aesthetics, our culture, our so-called taste, exposure, and acceptance of performances and writings. At the end of the day, we are all talented and bring to the table our uniqueness, which create each performance unique. Whoa, thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. And oh, Ruth Sabrina Malachek. Hamilton calls out yes. Ruth Malachek. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Serena. Yes. So I guess we need to wrap. Do we want to announce that? We want to announce these few things, like the people who've made. We've only got two commitments for the May Day Art Part um, discussions, but it's never too late, and you can. Yeah, let's do it now. You can. Um, let's do it. You can write to the Art Part at HowlRound.com anytime and say, "We're going to do an art conversation." It can be anything. It doesn't have to be like this. So shout out to a host of people in Detroit and Bloomsburg <laughs> Theater Ensemble Yay. in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Please let us know how it goes. Please. And then there will be archive, video archive of these conversations, um, and they'll be separate, so anybody can watch whichever ones were missed, um, or all of them at HowlRound.tv, or just search HowlRound for the art part. And I have one more Valentine. A Valentine. Can I show it to you? Please. So for those of you who weren't here at the beginning, we began by reading Valentines to the theater. And I wrote this long-ass poem. Um, <laughs> um, but then, and Mark brought in one that he had found, and I brought in one that I found. I couldn't decide between the two of them. So I brought it in to, for the end. It has a little um, hummingbird on the back. I don't know if you can see this in the thing. And this says here, theater ever after is the, um, okay, I got it, I got it. Um, I'm going to try and show this. I don't know if you can see it. Can you close in a little? Um, so there's two buildings, two little fancy houses. This says you, this says me, and this one is the theater. And it says, in my imaginary neighborhood, you live right next door. And inside it says, don't even get me started on the imaginary universe we could create. Thanks for making my real life sparkle. Yeah, thanks. I love you, theater. Todd. I love you, theater. I love you, Todd. I love you, Mark. Happy thanks Thanksgiving. <laughs> it is Thanksgiving. See you at Thanksgiving. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Thank you, Vijay, Matthew. Thank you, Thank you HowlRound. Thank you, Our Change Us, for hosting for us and Roberto Uno and gang. Thank you, my friend. Thank friends. you. We did it. We did it. <laughs> ah!